China's Navy is now the largest in the world, and it's purpose-built for a cross-strait operation to invade or blockade Taiwan. And many China watchers around Washington, D.C. believe that the Taiwan Strait could be the most important battlefield of the 21st century. But that's not actually what the CCP thinks. In Xi Jinping's view, the war has already started on the most important battlefield, which is your mind. The CCP calls it cognitive domain warfare, part of their larger political warfare strategy. In a handbook on military political work, she stated, quote, the crumbling of a regime always starts in the realm of ideas. Changing the way people think is a long-term process. Once the front lines of human thought have been broken through, other defensive lines also become harder to defend. The realm of ideas, according to the document, is a smokeless battlefield. Cognitive warfare is not something we tend to think about here in the West, we have ideas like soft power, but they're not really a national strategy. We don't really do propaganda here. After all, there's nowhere you can find a more scathing critique of the United States and its government than in the New York Times or on Fox News on any given day. We don't have any equivalent of a United Front Work Department, China's global industrial scale influence operation. We don't have colossal state media apparatuses. On the smokeless battlefield of people's minds, we don't have a standing military at all. So the question is, how do we fight back on that battlefield of people's minds while also staying true to our values? That's the question we have for our hearing witnesses tonight. But before we get there, I want to share another quote from Xi Jinping. In a 2013 speech at the National Propaganda and Ideology Work Conference, she issued a call to arms. And he said, innovate foreign propaganda methods, strengthen discourse system construction, strive to forge new concepts, new categories, and new expressions that circulate between China and the outside world. Tell China's story well, disseminate China's voice well, and strengthen our discourse power internationally. When I read Xi's call to innovate foreign propaganda methods, I'll admit my mind immediately jumped to TikTok. That quote is almost a perfect description, albeit in CCP speak, of the TikTok platform. On Xi's smokeless battlefield, TikTok is the perfect weapon. It's camouflaged in plain sight. Tonight, we're going to examine some data later about how TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, has, in Xi's words, strengthened China's discourse power. But it's important to note that in 2018, the CCP shut down ByteDance's news aggregator because it posted content that goes against socialist core values. And in a groveling self-criticism, the founder of ByteDance apologized for failing to respect socialist core values and deviating from public opinion guidance and failing to realize that socialist core values are the prerequisite to technology. Following this, ByteDance announced a new strategy to hire 4,000 extra censors and integrate socialist core values into its technology. ByteDance's editor-in-chief and the secretary of ByteDance's CCP committee vowed to ensure that the algorithm would follow the correct political direction. So in the best case scenario, TikTok is just CCP spyware. That's why so many state and national governments have banned it on official phones. That's why we've banned it on government phones. But in the worst case scenario, TikTok is perhaps the largest malign influence operation ever conducted allowing a CCP-controlled entity to become the dominant media platform, the dominant news platform in America, would be a huge mistake, in my opinion. It would be as if, in 1962, at the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis, we allowed Pravda and the KGB to purchase the New York Times, the Washington Post, ABC, and NBC, and that probably understates the scope, uh, the scope, the scope of the problem. So make no mistake, the battlefield of our minds is already joined, and Congress must act with urgency to prevent the CCP from seizing the high ground.